Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be sharing a workflow that I've come up with for using the oil paint filter. No swirly oil paint filter here, just something a little bit more natural. Let me show you how. So here we are in Adobe Bridge, and I'm going to open this in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, once it's in here, the first thing we need to do is very easy indeed. We're going to take down the highlights. We're going to take up the shadows. We're going to take down the whites and up the blacks. Then let's bring the exposure down a little bit. All right, so we've exposed as much of the detail and the color as we can. I'm going to put some clarity in there as well to bring out some of the details. And already you can see that we're starting to get a bit of a painterly effect anyway. Now I chose this image because it suits the oil paint filter very well. Landscapes are very good for this. Lots of greenery and lots of trees usually helps. All right, that's all we're going to do in Adobe Camera Raw. Let's open the image and off we go and into Photoshop. Tower on top of the hill and I'm going to use the patch tool for that so bear with me while I just run around this very quickly here we go now if you're seeing any other shape than a tower then shame on you move this across and just drop that down there good command and D I'm making myself giggle now now I've got a couple of repeating patterns so I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool nice hard brush not too big and just dab away and try and get rid of some of these repeating patterns good i'm done there all right let's move on next thing we want to do is make this into a smart object so i'm going to right click on the layer here there we go and convert to a smart object there we go next let's go to filter and oil paint filter and here we have my settings now these are sticky so this is what we're probably going to end up with but what you might come up with when you first open this is something along these lines now for me this is too swirly it's just too much i think i certainly don't like the shine we can see what the shine does here and if i bring up the scale a bit you can see it even more i'm not a big fan of that so i'm going to take that down right the way down in fact i might give it a little bit sometimes just to give it a bit of texture in this case i don't want it now you can see all these little swirls going on i really don't want those so i'm going to bring the stylization right down and the cleanliness i'm going to bring up and you can see it kind of makes it quite fuzzy so to bring back some of the details we can bring down the cleanliness and we can bring up the stylization now for this image stylization wants to come up a little bit more than cleanliness wants to come down it's going to change every time but i'm just bringing it up almost to the point where it starts to get swirly and then i take it down a little bit so it gets a bit swirly take it down all right bring the cleanliness down a little bit more perhaps somewhere around there's going to be great so there we go let's click ok and then we have our filter the oil paint filter as a smart object i can turn that on and off and go back into that if i wish okay there's a few things that i want to do to this image first of all is to bring out some of the colors if this was a painting then some of the colors might be a bit more vibrant than the others come down and choose an adjustment layer in this case hue saturation and indeed i want to bring up the red so where it says master if i click on that and then reds and then i can bring the reds up now i'm really looking at the roofs here i'm going to oversaturate them there we go and just close that down a little bit now this is too much and it's going across the entire image which i don't want but you'll notice that we have a layer mask on this layer i'm going to press d for default so i get the white and the black colors foreground and background respectively and i want to fill this mask with black so i'm going to press command on a mac that's control on a pc and backspace and it will fill it with black thus hiding all the red adjustment that we made so i'm going to brush and fairly soft brush i'm going to make it a bit smaller 
and I'm going to bring the opacity as you can see here right down to about 15 maybe 10 15 percent because what I want to do is put this saturation on in different amounts in different places so here I might want uh, a little bit more red um, than I do here I certainly want a little less there but still I want more red than is actually there on the bushes down the bottom I'm going to add quite a bit I want them to be quite vibrant so I'm going to paint quite a bit in there there we go and now I'm still thinking that this house in the middle wants a little bit more red in there okay there we go so if I turn this on and off you can see the difference that we've made to that now, I'd also like to change the grass a little bit so I'm going to do exactly the same a hue saturation and I'm going to change the greens and the yellows this time but I can use this tool here which is an on image adjustment so if I click on that and come onto the image you see I get this eyedropper it's asking me what color do I want to change I want to change the green so if I click and move over to the left you can see that I'm desaturating the grass or if I move to the right I'm saturating it okay let's desaturate it quite a bit now, if that's not quite worked out how we want we can choose another bit of green and go along and change that one too so I'm desaturating the greens I'm saturating the reds to try and bring out some of the colors the way that I want to see them in this image okay let's move on let's create the next bit that we want which is to do some dodging and burning and the way that I'm going to do this is quite old school and what I need to do for that is to create a new layer and then fill this layer edit and fill with a 50% gray click OK and then change the blend mode of this to overlay Now that's going to have no difference now whatsoever but if I paint on black it's going to make it darker if I paint whiter it's going to make it lighter I use this quite a lot so I won't go over it too much here let's go over and get a brush and black is our foreground color so we're going to darken things down I'm going to make the brush a bit bigger again bring the opacity right down I'm going to come down 8% there we go I'm going to start painting this on you can see the difference straight away so I start to paint this on I actually want it a bit darker at the top there and then maybe just a little bit down here where we've got the blues and then I really want to darken up this bush down the bottom here because what I'm trying to do is draw the eye to this middle part where the main farmhouse is so I'm going to go around here and it's going to take a little bit more than the sky because I'm really darkening this bit down there we go over and over I go I'm not bringing up the opacity of this brush you'll notice I'm doing it very carefully and gently and I'm doing it quite precisely although it looks like I'm just jiggling around I am choosing my points very carefully indeed okay let's bring this around okay that's good and I want a little bit across the top of the hills here just to darken those down and I'm actually going to come into this part and darken that a bit more definitely across here and then just a few spots around the house which are looking a bit bright so I'm going to bring those down as well but not too much so there we go I've drawn the attention to this area in the middle by darkening it down a little bit but we're going to darken it down a little bit more in just a minute more of that in just a second all right there we go next thing I need to do is add a texture now there are a lot of textures out there on the internet feel free to go and get one of those textures and put it in as a new layer then choose your blend mode probably going to be overlay something along those lines I'm going to use something up here let's go windows and extensions and you'll see that in my extensions I've got Adobe paper texture now I did a tutorial about this some time ago I'll put a link up on the screen and on the blog post on tip squirrel where this video appears as well for you to go and see that video and learn more about it but in basic terms all this does is brings this panel up here which you can then add some textures I'm just going to reset this because it's still set from the last time I used it and what we can do here is we can click on one of the textures it will apply it it will give it the blend mode that we ask for here and it will resize it to the size of our document so it's really very very helpful indeed the one I'm going to go for here is this one here dawn grunge if I click on that you can see that it does exactly what we wanted it puts it on on overlay and makes it the right size you can see that really nice texture 
perhaps a bit strong at the moment, but a really nice texture for this kind of effect. Let's bring down the opacity of that. And there we go. That's all very good. Let's put another texture on. This time, let's choose this one here, Colosseum Sienna. And this time you'll notice that it puts in a bit of a color cast and it gives us this vignette around the outside, which is quite nice. I like this effect, but I'm going to desaturate this. So again, a hue saturation layer, but this time I'm going to clip it to the underlying layer, this icon here. And that means then that it's only going to affect the layer that's directly underneath. So I click on that. And then if I bring down the saturation there, you can see that we lose the saturation, but we bring out some of this darkness really quite nice. Okay, there we go. And of course, if I'm thinking it's a bit too strong, I can reduce the opacity as well. But actually, I quite like it. I say it adds that bit of vignette to it as well. Perhaps a bit strong in some of the corners. Let's bring that down just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Right, one last thing we want to do. Let's go and click on our hue saturation layer and then let's make a levels. Now, earlier on, we completely destroyed this image in inverted commas in the fact that we took the highlights down and the shadows up, etc. So we end up with this strange kind of curve going on in our histogram. Now, it might be the first thing you want to do is to pull these two in. This would be a way that you would tackle some images and then alter this one. And this works well. But what we want to do is just give it a little bit more on this end for this image. So I can easily just sort of control this and bring this out like that. There we go. That's nice. Now I can see that this layer is being a bit strong. So I can bring this down just a little bit more. There we go. And there we have it. That's my workflow for making oil paintings. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me. My name's Eric Renault. This has been a video for tipsquirrel.com. Don't forget to go along and check out all kinds of goodies for Photoshop and Photoshop-related products. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.